Welcome back to Mass Appeal. It's tomato season. It is tomato or season. Or tomato season. Or you were pronouncing it in a weird way earlier. Tomato. That's, I love tomatoes. That's not how you pronounce it. <laughs> Either way. There are so many different mm -hmm. types of tomatoes, and it's always hard to, to really know which one you're going to choose when you go to the grocery store. Well, thankfully, Chef Bill Collins joins us, and he's going to show us the different types of tomatoes. So we'll have no more questions you, after this. Is there any more questions, then it's not my fault. <laughs> I just want that known right now. But no, there's so many different kinds of tomatoes, and when you go to the supermarket, or thankfully where we live here in Western Mass, we've got farm stands all over the place where people are just you know tossing tomatoes out but not at you. Uh, the, the great <laughs> thing about that is there's so many different varieties, and you keep seeing so many about heirloom tomatoes as an example. So what is an heirloom tomato? And it's actually just what it sounds like. It's from seeds that have been around for, in some cases, up to 50 years uh, when you buy them you know, commercially, uh, or even just many, many generations. So it's all these different tomatoes that go into it. And I have here a bowl of, oh, these are all different heirloom tomatoes. So you look at this one, that looks like something bad happened, but that was actually quite intentional, where you look at the darker, almost plum color on that mm -hmm. one, and red on the inside, sometimes you get you know, big, huge ones, but it really is just such a, a great, great flavored tomato. Sometimes there are different colors inside. This one is a standard you know, red tomato inside, but it's got that great skin. A great thing about that is when you're doing it on a plate, feel free to try one. Mm, uh, do it on a plate or something like that. So sweet. It's That's like the thing, it's like candy. Oh, well, well, no, well Ashley, you have to jump that's, in. And try it's it. different than a normal tomato. Uh, are it is. all of these kind of slightly different in flavor? Mm. Yes, uh, uh, yep, uh, they can be. Now, here we have another one here, it's and good. this is going to be slightly good. different. And so me, pretty. And, 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 and so, see how some are juicier? And as a rule, heirloom tomatoes aren't as good for sauce because they have usually thinner skins and a lot juicier. You can still make sauce out of them, but it's a little bit more time and effort. But it's still going to be worth it. And you can look at all these different ones. I mean, this doesn't look like any kind of a tomato, but it is. There no, are some, too, like that are huge. You see those heirloom the tomatoes big, that are amazing. Exactly, and the big beefsteak tomatoes. So when you go to the supermarket or even many farm stands, you usually find, in addition to the heirloom, just some basic types of tomatoes that we're very familiar with. Cherry tomatoes, the small, round ones. Mm -hmm. uh, grape tomatoes, they're shaped like grapes. Uh, also, the regular beefsteak, as, as, as you mentioned, brandy wine. That is brandy generally uh, generally looking something like this. Now, I took the liberty, and uh, don't hate me for doing this, I went to a supermarket, and I went to where the, the tomatoes that are available the rest of the year. I just bought one at a large supermarket the other day. Now, I don't know if the microphone can pick this up. Is that, <laughs> that's a tomato. Now, that's uh, generally what's available the rest of the year. Hard, very hard. We can do this one, it'll smash. And now, is this also considered a vine ripened? They're this, called this, vine ripened. Yeah, well, this is actually a, a real tomato from, uh, I keep calling them real tomatoes, they're from a, from a local <laughs> farm Stop stand. Yeah. But uh, yes, because uh, technically all tomatoes are vine ripened. Now, when you get outside the season, you've got like hydroponics, which are grown you know, in water and things like that. But this is the real deal. Now, let me just show you a couple of things. Now, uh, a, a great way to take the stem out a little $2 item called a tomato shark. I think we've had used one of these before. And it just digs and you can right use out. them on strawberries too. It's They're like a huller. Absolutely, almost. it's exactly what it is. So now, if you wanted to uh, peel a tomato, which is great for doing sauce, you take the stem out, take the top out, and then you put an X right through the skin. Put it in boiling water for one minute. All right. And so what's going to happen is the water, hot water, is going to get under the skin uh, in that minute. What then is going to happen is you want to take it and put the uh, tomato into, plunge it into ice water because you've started the cooking process and you don't want it to be mushy, you just want to take the skin off. Right, Here's make a really it easier. Basic question, why yes. you boil tomatoes? Well, in this case, this is the way to get the skin off because especially when tomatoes are fresh and you know they're looser, if you try and use a peeler or even a paring knife, you end up with a pile of mush. It's a mess, yeah. Well, but why wouldn't you eat the skin? Well, For now sauce, here's, here's right? why. I'm just going to, you're absolutely right ahead of, ahead of me because what you want to do is when you have a tomato sauce, the reason you want to do that, you don't always have to with a fresh sauce, is because you get a little stuff stuck in your teeth. It's oh. almost like you talk about the, the corn silks, yeah. uh, with, that is the right term, the corn silk uh, on the corn, and you're sometimes sitting there with a toothpick at the dinner table, not very classy. Not classy. And this can uh, do the same thing. So this way, it's still fine uh -huh. without it, but uh, I'm not going to guarantee you're going to get stuff caught in your teeth, but this way, it's just a nicer, more refined, nicer sauce. You don't have to do it, but it's really so simple as doing it that way, and see how it's already starting to come Oh, that off? was so quick. It's, uh, it's bursting. Exactly. It is bursting. Now, if you were to do this off uh, season, you know, say in the middle of winter, and you get even some of the nicer vine ripes, it doesn't always come off because it's not as big and juicy fresh as mm -hmm. this one. And again, you put in the ice water just to stop it from cooking. But you see how quick that is, it's already uh, bursting right off of there. And so once you give it uh, just even a few moments, but you can, it can even sit in there for a while, is see how it's coming right off? And it'll peel right off. And, and it comes right off like Look that. Look at that. But now, the, now here's the second pot. That's still a little warm. Usually wow. I leave it in the ice water a little longer. 
And now you see, uh, if you want to take the seeds and things out, and again, you just kind of do that. Just uh, Oh, this makes it a whole lot easier. It is, and then you're done. And so, again, there's nothing wrong with having the seeds in your um, uh, in your sauce, in, in your sauce yeah. but again, it just makes it a little more refined. It's a and personal preference thing, too. That's it, really it, easy to do. Exactly. Now, I have a question for you. Yes. If I'm going to the grocery store, if I can't get any heirloom tomatoes, if, you know, if I just want to go to the grocery store, how do I pick the right tomatoes? Is there a science to it? Uh, well, you want it to be firm. You don't want it to be mushy. Don't you sound want, like that. You want to avoid that. Absolutely right, Ashley. But uh, a lot of times uh, you'll see, uh, uh, it might say vine ripe. Again, we're getting outside the season. Uh, a lot of times they'll have hydroponics, and there's some brands. Or you might want to ask the produce person, because you might, this is going to sound like a flip question, but what do you have that tastes like a tomato? Because when you get outside the season, uh, it's a little tough. And that's why it's such a great you know, month or two that we have the tomatoes here. And then you can have them with fresh mozzarella and basil, and just, just so many different kinds of salads to do it that and way. And lucky us, you're going to show us how to make a fresh tomato sauce with these delicious tomatoes that are in season. Absolutely. And we'll do that later on in the show. Yeah, look forward to Thank it. Thank you, Chef Bill. It's time for Taste of Deal. We're back with Bill Collins, a personal chef from ChefBill.com. And now he's going to show us how to make a delicious tomato sauce. Yes, this is actually, I love doing it this time of year. <clears throat> what I've got is the uh, some of the tomatoes that I cut up earlier. And I just threw in some garlic. I got a momentary head start, but the tomatoes just went in. They go in, they're looking very dry. But as you see, as they cook, all this liquid which is coming in there and that you're going to cook that off it can take 10 15 minutes you can simmer this for even up to an hour but the shorter time amount that you simmer it for even the fresher uh, the tomatoes are going to be so i've already put that in i'm going to put in a little white wine so it's kind of the opposite of a ratatouille and that's or, uh, that you want to let s simmer down right exactly because really all i'm doing is evaporating the liquid so what i'm going to do is i just uh, uh uh, put a little cold liquid so waiting for the uh, uh, simmer to come back up, but that's exactly it. You know, in, in similar to ratatouille, you do want a bit drier. This is going to be drier. All that liquid, you don't want that swimming around in your pasta. Now, Chef Bill, you just put in some what looked like olive oil and a spice. Actually, no. What I put in was some saffron. I like to take the saffron, just the saffron threads, and put them in a little warm water just to kind of give them that's a bit of a head was. start. And so, yes. What does saffron taste like? If you can describe saffron. Oh my, saffron tastes like uh, summer. A and summer day. A summer day, because here's the thing about saffron, is that it just kind of makes uh, foods have almost a, a fresh popping taste on your mouth. It's so hard to describe, because there's so many other flavors you can describe, but it acts, but it changes it completely. Really? And, but in, in a good way. Mm -hmm. And so, as uh, you'll find out, and actually I've got a sauce here that I already did make, so we wouldn't have to wait the 15, 20 minutes on that, because oh, we good. go over into the news. We don't have time. We don't yeah. have the time, no. unfortunately. But, but so what do you do, just simmer it, and, and then step away and maybe get your pasta going and do a few other things, because really you're just reducing that liquid out of there. Because even though I put the wine in, I like the flavor of the wine. Now this is a variation of my basic sauce. And all it is is sauteing some garlic, throw in the tomatoes, a little white wine, let it reduce down quite a bit, and then throw in some fresh basil at the end. It's a simple sauce. It is. And the thing about basil, and again, everybody's growing it in their backyards or their flower pots this time of year, is you want to put it in at the very end of a sauce because it's such a delicate herb that uh, it'll give up its flavor in you know, more than 10 minutes. You won't even taste it in there. So again, with this very fresh sauce and with the fresh basil, it just goes very quickly. Now, Bill, earlier you showed us how to peel tomatoes very easily. These are yes. all peeled tomatoes that are in here, is that yes. right? Yes, yes. And that's the thing. Peeling tomatoes is optional. Say you're in even more of a hurry, you just want to chop them up and throw them in. It's still going to be a wonderful sauce. The advantage of, of peeling them is you might not get little bits of, uh, of uh, some of the skin tomato in skin teeth. in your teeth. So if you have yeah. guests coming over, you want to peel the skin off. Unless so they like skin. You and never exactly, know. Exactly, yeah. True. And as we discussed, you don't want toothpicks at the table for all your guests. No. So. So, so this way, just let that simmer. It's going to take you know maybe 10, 15 minutes. Keep an eye on it. You can reduce it down to more of a gentle simmer and uh, then uh, come back and adjust the flavors. Now, here's what I adjust the flavors with. I'm going to put some basil in in a moment and then just salt and pepper. That's the and only they, things that you use to augment the flavor. Yep, just keep it very simple. Now, some people like a bit of a bite. You might want to put in just a few red pepper flakes. Don't go crazy with red pepper flakes. They'll take your head off. <laughs> you can put more in. You can't take them out. Right. Every time. And so <laughs> otherwise you have to make twice as much more sauce to cover it up. That's true. So just a little bit, because some people do like a little bit of, a, of, of an oomph to it. And then you take the basil. And the great thing about basil, and these did come from uh, the flower pot of uh, basil that my wife plants every year, is you just roll it up like this. And Ash, you know what this is called, right? Is this, are we going to chiffonade? We are going to chiffonade. Oh. And so just kind of just <laughs> go along like that. And so by rolling it up like that, 
Oh, you're really good at chiffonading. I am. I do this for a living. That's and true. So <laughs> you might think I, you do. Or yeah, I'm thinking of changing it to chefchiffonade.com. <laughs> I might have already been taken. But then, as you can see from just some of the fresh tomatoes earlier, it just it looks so great and it tastes great. And this, let's touch on this. This uh, we were talking earlier might be bar none the best appetizer. It's so simple and so good. And it healthy, is. so healthy. It is, and you can have a plan of uh, just drizzle over a little balsamic vinegar, maybe a little olive oil, or you can make a vinaigrette. There's just so many things you do with it, but the basic fresh mozzarella and, and tomato just jumps out at you. This time of year, if, if you're not having it at least four times a day, you're missing out. <laughs> I'm so distracted by the scent of this kitchen right now. It, the, it's incredible. The white wine and the tomatoes. Oh, if, if anything, just it's not just about having your sauce at the end, it's about having your kitchen smell like this. That's a great thing. Oh my you, gosh. Because you, you start with the, just the garlic, which is a big wow, and then you know the tomatoes and the wine. You're absolutely right. Oh, it's, I'm so distracted. I you can't it, focus. It, it, I, I blame myself. <laughs> I blame you. So, yeah, everybody does. So now, just <laughs> now, when you've got your sauce, you don't want to put all of it in. I put it in, especially if the pasta is still warm, it'll, it'll start to absorb some of the liquid. But all of a sudden now, you've got this slightly colored pasta you know, from the sauce, and that makes a nice presentation. Uh, rush out and buy a white bowl, because it's going to stand out even more. <laughs> Everybody right now Everybody rush out yeah, at noon. After Mass Appeal is exactly. over. Exactly. And then pop that in there, and then you can pop on a little more sauce, and then it just makes such a great presentation. So you've got the sauce there. That's the trick. I He's right see. with that white bowl. And then some of the basil oh yeah and fresh mozzarella of uh, the parmesan and the aged parmesan and just and it's it cheaper it and healthier not healthier it's cheaper and better if you buy it in a block right yes i do believe that it's against the law in many countries to get uh, parmesan cheese in a green shaky can so <laughs> but shaky. but if you <laughs> if you do it this way and it just puts uh, on, on like that mm. uh, it's so fast and easy and if you're doing a longer tomato sauce Take the rinds, cut the rind off, put it and simmer it in the sauce. That's going to give you even more of a different flavor instead oh. of just throwing it out. Excellent idea. I can make this at home now. You Chef can. Bill, wow. And you can too Thank if you, you want to copy this recipe. Thank you. Online, mymassappeal.com. Later today, but don't you go anywhere. More Mass Appeal coming up right after this.